Holy Ghost in this place this morning. Amen. Amen. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. liberty. Amen. And I feel that liberty in the house today. God bless each and every one of you. Why don't you shake your neighbor's hand one more time. If you didn't shake somebody's hand, do it now. Make them feel welcome this morning in the name of Jesus. For those of you who don't know, I'm Mervyn Miller. I'm pastor here. God bless you for being here today. We welcome you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This is an awesome Sunday, as has been said already. It's Pentecost weekend Sunday, and we're glad that you're here. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. Praise God. Ah, yes. Hallelujah. I'd like to uh, just say before we go on, we're so thrilled. If you are a first-time guest, I welcome you in the name of the Lord today to Christ Church. I pray that you'll leave this place touched by the anointing and the power of God. And whatever it is that you've come expecting God to do in your life, you will leave receiving that this morning in Jesus' name. And if you agree with me, would you say amen? Amen. amen. Praise God. In just a few moments, I'm so glad to have our evangelist, James Feld, with us today. He's going to be coming to minister in just a few moments. Before that, we've got a couple things we want to do. As you know, we, we celebrate miracles at Christ Church. We serve a miracle-working God. How many believe that? Yes. Yes. And uh, you don't have to be here long to know that we believe the power of God to work miracles in lives, provide jobs, financial blessings, sicknesses, diseases, man, are no trouble for our God. He is the maker of this body and he knows how to best mend it. And over the weeks we have Continue to testify of God's glory and his mercy. Amen. If you'll step out by faith, as Brother Osborne said this morning, whatever it is in your life, if you'll just step out by faith, God will meet you at that place. And he'll respond to you. A few weeks ago, Sister uh, Sheila said to me, Pastor, I'm going to just got to go in and tell my boss I cannot miss Wednesday night services anymore. I'm just going to have to change my schedule or quit that schedule and quit that job if I have to. And she went into the uh, job and, and said to her boss, I need to meet with you. She was determined she was going to get Wednesday nights off for the felt. And her boss said, and you correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm just paraphrasing what you testified a few weeks back. Said, uh, before you talk to me, I need to talk to you. Come into my office. I want to promote you and I want to take you off night shift, make you assistant manager, and you'll be working days now. Now, what was it you wanted to talk to me about? <laughs> you see, once you step out, you make a determination with God. He'll meet you there. He'll provide for you. He'll open the door for you. He'll bless you. He'll heal you. He'll be there. He'll be a true God. Last week, we testified for the Matthew. I don't see him here this morning, but he came to church a week ago Sunday with back problems. He told me last Sunday, he said, which we shared last Sunday, he said, after we prayed in the service last Sunday, the pain went away, and I was completely healed of that back pain last Sunday. Yes. Yes. That's the miracle working God we're serving today. Yes. And so this morning, just for a couple of seconds, we don't want to take too much time, but Sister Garcia has a testimony of God working a miracle in her life, and we want, we want to share miracles that God does. Yes. Mr. Garcia, come real quick and share with everybody the miracle that God did for you this past week. Praise the Lord, church. Um, in the beginning of May, uh, May 8th, I had to normally my routine exam for mammogram. And when I was in the, in, in the, in the, in the appointment, the lady told me, we will call you if it's funny thing or or we will receive a letter if it's everything okay. Like uh, four days after the, the appointment, I received a phone call. You need to come back for another mammogram because we find something in there. I said, oh God, 
Speak to that obstacle. Speak to that problem. Amen. Is here this morning. 
and it's for you, and God can work a miracle in your life before this service is over. How many believe that today? Yes. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I don't want to take up too much time, but we've got two very precious folks that are going to be in for surgery this coming week, and I want to pray for them this morning. I just feel a beautiful unction of the Holy Ghost and power. Faith is in the house this morning. Amen. I know there's going to be an opportunity at the end of the service after we hear the word. I'm sure for different ones to step out and respond to the word this morning. But uh, on Tuesday, Sister Mary is going in for surgery. They rescheduled it. We're going to pray anyway. Amen. Because that might be a good thing, a good sign. Amen. <laughs> So, Sister Mary, you come on up. Maya's going in for surgery uh, on Wednesday morning again. And we want to pray for her uh, this morning also. So, Sister Willis, if you'll bring Maya up in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Sister Mary, just stand right over here. I'm going to ask our evangelist to come. Amen. Sister Salida, if you'll come. Amen. In the name of the Lord. We're just going to pray. Would you stand with me across this sanctuary this morning? In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. How many believe in that prayer answering God we've been talking about? Yeah. In Jesus' name, God. Right Hallelujah. So they rescheduled yours, Mary, but that's good because God's yeah. working a miracle already there. And we're going to pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Maya, in that surgery, we're going to pray for you also that God's going to bring you through that. You already came through one major surgery on your back. And this Wednesday is just going to be another piece of cake, and God's going to guide the surgeons in Jesus' name. Can you just stretch your hands forward this morning as we pray right now? In the name of the Lord, we're going to anoint you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Come on, lift up your voices and let's pray together right now. Father, thank you, Lord, right now. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank God for what he's doing in this place right now. And the miracles. And I encourage you, again, I know you hear this all the time, but when God works a miracle in your life, let's testify to it. Let's give the word out there and give God glory. God doesn't just heal you just for you to hide it away in your personal knowledge. He heals you so you can be a testimony of the power yeah. of his name. Yeah. He gets all the glory. Not man. God gets all the glory this morning. Praise God. Clap your hands one more time unto him. God bless you. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. Just want to a special welcome to Tori's mom who is here from California. God bless her for being here today. In Jesus' name. Amen. And so glad to see Tori through her surgery. Looking so much better. Uh, still working in that. We thank the Lord for that. Man, I'm glad for what God's doing. I never want to not thank God for the things he does in our lives. When he provides for you, let's give him praise. Yes. There's jobs just waiting for some of you out there. There's healings for some of you yes. out there. Deliverances. I believe it and I stand upon his word. Yes. And he said, ask and you shall receive. Right. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. Right. Man, you do what God challenges you to do and see if God won't meet you there. That's your point of faith. And it'll start this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, clap your hands unto the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Stand with me together right now. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a privilege to invite our evangelist today, Brother James Feld. He's been here before. He's no stranger. Man that preaches the word of God. Amen. We want him to come deliver. This morning, God's word to us. How many is open for the word of the Lord this morning? Yes. Amen. If you're here, if you're here and, and you come expecting, God's got something for you. Yes. Amen. If you speak Spanish and you have not uh, got your headset yet, just raise your hand 
and we'll make sure we get that for you this morning. We do have translation going on during the message in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. Let's preach with the preacher this morning. God bless with the fellow. Come preach to us this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. It's certainly good to be in the house of the Lord today, Pentecost Sunday. Amen. God is, is a faithful God. Yeah. He knows every need that is in the house. And God is going to minister and to our individual needs and then corporately to us as a church. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, I invite you to turn with me to the book of John. I do give honor to Pastor Miller family and appreciate their friendship and all that they mean to the kingdom of God and to this local church. How many are thankful for your pastor? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Shepherd of our souls. Yeah. Amen. Appreciate, appreciate them. Amen. My wife was not able to be here today. She does send her regards and, and um, she's normally with me and uh, I do appreciate her. Amen. Book of John, and uh, we'll go to chapter 14. If you do not have a Bible, someone near you should, and we'll be happy to share with you. If they refuse to share, just take their Bible. <laughs> they don't need it. Or maybe they do need it. John, the 14th chapter. John, chapter 14. Verse number one, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house are many mansions, but were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Verse number 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth in you and shall be in you dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Can you say amen? amen? The spirit of truth. And that's what I want to preach about today. The spirit of truth. Would you pray with me? Father, we love you. We thank you for your goodness and for your mercy. Your great loving kindness towards us. We'll forever give you the praise and the glory and the honor that you so rightfully deserve. Any among us today, Lord, that do not yet understand, have not yet received of your spirit, I pray, Lord, you open their hearts and minds to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our souls. Those of us that have been in this journey a while, I pray you strengthen us today. We grip this truth a little greater in our minds and in our spirits. I pray, Lord, you unleash your spirit in this place. Speak to us. Change us forevermore. We praise you. And everybody said in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. You may be seated. The Lord bless you. Amen. The Bible mentions the spirit of truth. There is another verse of scripture in the Bible that mentions the spirit of error. The spirit of truth. And a spirit of error. There is a right way and there is a wrong way. This is what life is all about. There are good spirits and bad spirits. There are good things and bad things. Things that are right, things that are wrong. And I know that probably some of you already leaping into your mind is, but which way is right? And which spirit is right? And who's to say it's right? What if it's wrong? I'm doing the wrong thing, headed in the wrong direction. There is but one God. There are 
many false gods, many fake or would-be gods, but there's one true God. The Bible says it's the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. The Lord said beside him there was no other God. We have all, all of us in this room, we have all sought for many things to save us, to deliver us, however you want to put it, to make our lives better, to enhance ourselves. We have tried things. We have indulged ourselves in things and then come up short. We have trusted in people and people have failed us. Though they have done their best, their best was not good enough. This is true for everybody. Human beings were not designed to save each other. One person that you look to and trust is struggling with their own difficulties and their own faults and shortcomings in life. Everybody has things that they deal with and struggle with. And all humanity needs saving. Can you say amen? amen. Our world needs saving. People are trying to find things that, because they cannot be saved, things that would draw their attention away and cause them to, for a moment, forget reality. But when whatever that is finishes doing its job and you come back to reality, reality is that the world is messed up. The world is falling apart at the seams. I'm not here to be a doomsday prophet. I'm just speaking truth to any magazine you read, article, newspaper, internet, newscaster, you name it. It is a sad state that humanity is in. Though we are the uh, one of, if not the richest country in the world, we have countless people, seemingly countless. They have counted them. They say but millions of people that have no food, people that have no home just a few blocks from here on street corners, people who have less than, and yet we have seemingly everything. The world, I think you could all agree, is not perfect. The world is in need of a Savior. Can you say amen? amen. There has to be more than what we presently have. There has to be. Humanity has to come to that realization that there has to be more to life than what I presently have. More than a job, more than an income, more than another day, another week, or month, or year. There has to be something more. There has to be more to life than what I presently have, or what I presently am, or what I am presently doing. What is the end of all things? One writer said, What is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou visited him? That God would interact with humanity. That God would, and I know that, and, and I'll deal with a lot of things today, that, that uh, maybe your mind is saying, Well, of humanity, why doesn't God do something about the plight of humanity? Why doesn't God fix the things that are wrong in the world or in America? Why doesn't God do something about it if God exists? First of all, you have to read the Bible and understand God. Allow God to open your understanding to understand Him. According to John 4 and 24, God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. What does that mean? In the natural sense, in our carnal minds, in our natural thinking, we can never understand God. God is a spirit. He's greater than we are. We have to be educated to the things of God, lifted to the things of God. We try to understand God in a natural sense. It's confusion and false doctrine. We have to allow God to bring us up to his level of education and open our understanding that we can understand who he is, what he is, and what it is that he desires to do. The world that we live in, in trying to seek and to find God, has made much error and shipwreck. Trying to find hope in themselves, trying to find within themselves the answer 
to all things. It does not exist there. And if we were all brutally honest, we would have to admit that that is correct. I am not a God. I am not my own Savior. I don't have the strength within me to make things better. Jesus said in the New Testament, He said, Which one of you is able with thinking only to add one cubit to your stature, make yourself taller, allow your bones to grow, stretch and lengthen? Nobody could do it. And He said, If you can't do the least of these things, why do you worry about the rest of these things? He said... One of the smallest things to be able to do was to think and cause yourself to grow a cubit in stature. We struggle with a lot of things in life. The fact is, we don't have a handle on life. We cannot fix, we cannot control, though we try to control things, we are unable to do it. The picture that I am painting here today is that we need Jesus. We cannot do this on our own. Somebody said, well, I'm making it. We're not making it. John 15, the Lord said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. And without me, you can do nothing. I want you to let the Holy Ghost speak to you today. It'll get harder before it gets easier. But you have to understand that the way of man is a way of error. It's wrong. I am not a good person. You are not a good person. Let that sink in for just a moment. I am a good person. I'm not a good person. If I didn't have the help of God help me be a good person and cause me to treat people right, I wouldn't treat people right. Have you ever noticed that a child born of a mother, a good child, an innocent child, but a child without being taught, educated by anyone will lie, will blame somebody else rather than themselves as to who took the cookie out of the cookie jar. Just a toddler will blame sister or brother. Somebody else will steal a piece of candy, will lie, because this is in our DNA package. We are born in sin, and we are shapen in iniquity. Can you say amen? amen. All flesh has come short of the glory of God. Yeah. There is no specific sinner. There is no greater sinner. We're all sinners, and we all need help. Now, the world likes to put people in a class of their own that you are the worst sinner. There is no sinner on the planet as bad as you are. That's a lie from the enemy. Everybody has sinned. Everybody has missed the mark. And everybody needs help. Can you say amen? I'm starting with a Bible study here today. We all got to get on the same page. We've got saved people in the house. We've got unsaved people in the house. We've got people that aren't sure if they are saved. Though at times they think they're saved. At other times, the enemy tells them they're not saved. And they struggle with the tug of war of two. Am I right or am I wrong? Is this the truth or is this not the truth? And there is a warfare that goes on in our minds and we struggle from time to time. We've got to put an end to all that. We've got to get in the grace of God and the help of the Holy Ghost to know what is right and what is wrong. Can you say amen? Amen. God has created all things, and all things consist because of God, and without God does not anything exist that does exist. God is the creator of everything. All life comes from God. We owe God an answer and an explanation as to the way that we live. That's what it's all about when we come to church. It's not a beautiful building and smiling faces. It's a place where we meet with God. It's the only place uh, in the counties, the only place... In the world, it's the church, in other words, universally, that God is ordained that he would meet with man. God would commune with man and talk with man. And God would educate man as to his ways. In the Old Testament, you had Moses. You had a tabernacle of the Old Testament. God would speak to the man of God who would speak to the people of God and would instruct them. If you re read the book of Leviticus and Exodus, you will find that God would teach them and train them as to how to live and how not to live and, and, and what to do and what not to do. We've gotten away from that and it's been to our own demise. We still need a God that tells us the right way and tells us the wrong way. Paul said in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul said, I didn't know what sin was until the word came or the law came. 
When God's word came into my life, now I know what's right and I know what's wrong. Like a parent, a child is born, a child needs a parent to tell them what's right and what's wrong. Don't play in the middle of I-95. That's a no-no. Stay in the yard. Don't do this and don't do that. We teach and we instruct according to the knowledge that we have. Well, think about it. God has all wisdom and all knowledge. And God knows what we should do and what we should not do. People say, well, I don't like God's rules. It's not about liking it. It's about right and wrong. And the right rule is the right rule no matter how it makes you feel. Think on it for just a moment. Well, I don't like that way. It doesn't matter if I like that way. It's the right way, and it will help you. I drove to church today, and I've got lines on either side of the lane that I was in on the road, 295. And, and guess what? I may not like that solid white line, can't stand it, and want to erase it. But the fact is, it's there for a reason, and it helps me keep my vehicle straight, stay in my lane, and hopefully stay away from an accident. I don't like rules and I don't like regulations. I don't want nobody telling me anything. The fact is we all enjoy things that work according to rules and regulations from God. The sun that is perfectly where it is and a smidge closer to us and we fry like bacon, pull away just an inch, a centimeter, anything, and we would freeze to death. It's in the perfect spot because the creator told it to be there and I'm thankful for that law. I don't need the sun telling its creator, I don't want to obey and I ain't doing what you say and do what it wants. I may not be here in the next second. Things that are obedient are things that are blessed. Can you say amen? amen. Rebellion doesn't get us anywhere, but obedience to the law and the authority of God gets us to a place where our lives work together and all things work together and our lives are better for it. Can you say amen? Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Living and walking in the ways of God, the truth of God, will bring everything in your life together. Well, I'll never struggle again. Oh, you'll have struggles, but you'll have victory through those struggles. The Lord did not say that he would give us everything in the first beginning of our walk with him, and we would never need anything, but he did say, I'm with you to the ends of the world. Even if the earth is falling apart. He said, I'm with you. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall remain forever. Can you say amen? amen. The word of God outdoes everything. It lasts forever. You can read every new edge thing that you want. You can indulge yourself in every think tank and everything that is in the world and what man says. I don't want to trust man. I want to trust God. God is above man. Can you say amen? amen? The truth is that God exists. The truth is that he exists for humanity. That humanity might be saved. That you and I, regardless of our lives, our past, our thinking, our upbringing, where we come from and where we are seemingly headed, that there is a God that loves us and cares about us and desires to save us. Yeah. A God that would bring every human being out of gross darkness into his marvelous light. There is nothing weak about God and there is no darkness in God. He is pure light and revelation. And anybody that gets in Christ shall be delivered from wrong thinking. And shall be brought into the goodness of God and be delivered from everything that is not of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. This world can so harden an individual that we don't believe God exists. We don't believe God does any good. If God did exist, then why doesn't God fix the plight of humanity and feed every hungry soul, fix and stop every war? Every gang violence and all sin that is going on, why doesn't God fix it? First of all, God will not involve himself in the affairs of man except man ask him to. If man does not want God, then God will not be there. We are not robots. 
You hunger and you thirst after righteousness and you shall be filled. But if I don't hunger for it, if I don't thirst for it, if I don't want it, then I shall not have it. Somebody said amen. amen. I don't want God. Who needs God? I'll do it my own way. The Bible says in the Old Testament that man decided they didn't need God and every man did as he thought was right in his own eyes. Everybody. And they said, well, I think this is okay, so I'll do it. Every man, and the Bible says following that, then was war in their gates. When man does what man wants to do, there is confusion and there is war. When man does what God wants to do, then there is healing. You cannot receive the Spirit of God and have confusion in your life. It's impossible. God is not the author of confusion. When God comes into your life, things that make no sense will make perfect sense. Where you had confusion and no clarity, all of a sudden you will see things clearly and know the direction that you need to go. That's the kind of God I'm talking about today. A God that can make sense of your life and show you why you are here today. Help. Well, preacher man, I... I, I've tried church and it didn't work for me. I'm not asking you to try church. I'm asking you to try Jesus. I'm not asking you to join a denomination. I'm not asking you to join a building or a group of people. I'm asking you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Don't believe in humanity. Don't believe in people. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I trusted people. You say People failed me. People have been failing people since there have been people on the planet. We have all failed one another. And we have all done it wrong time and again. I am not an innocent man, neither are you. We all need the help and the grace and the mercy of God. This is what God provides. What I'm dealing with at this present time in delivering this message to you and hope that you can get a hold of it, some of you that I'm reaching for, is you cannot continue with excuses and why it doesn't work. God works. Everybody say God works. God works. If we, the Apostle Paul, before his conversion, was named Saul, Saul of Tarsus. That's where he came from. And the Lord, you remember, struck him down uh, when he was riding to arrest the Christians. And the Lord dealt with him. In the dealing with him, here's what the Lord said to him. Saul it is hard for you to kick against the pricks. It's hard for you to fight me. It's hard for you to resist me. You've been resisting me and your life has gotten increasingly worse. If you would simply submit to me, your life will make sense in a moment's time. All things will get better. One conversation with the Lord, one moment, one experience with God, and your whole life will absolutely change yeah. and turn around. Some of you have walked into this place today absolutely frustrated and confused about life. I've done this and I've done that and it still has not worked. I'm telling you that if you will give it to Jesus, he will work it out. One talk with him, one moment with him, one experience with him, and all of your frustration will go out the window and you can have peace of mind in the Holy Ghost. This is the day of Pentecost, the day that the Lord poured out his spirit. We read it in John 14, the comforter, that he would come and never leave. The spirit of God that would abide with man. God is his spirit and God desires to abide with man and to help man. If you've ever been a parent, you understand the frustration of wanting to help your child, but your high child has become and gotten to that place of wanting to be independent so they don't want your help. So you let them do it on their own, and they fall, and they fail. And then they want, why didn't you help me? Well, I didn't help you because you told me not to help you. You asked me not to help you, and you wanted to learn on your own. This is us with, human with God, is that humanity says, I don't need God's help. So God says, fine, and leaves us alone. And we make shipwreck of it, and then we say, God, why didn't you help me? Anybody have that testimony? I got this. I don't need church. I don't need a preacher. I don't need the Bible. I got this. And then my life is destroyed. And I say, God, why didn't you help me? And God says, you didn't want my help. 
If you wanted my help, then you would have opened my Bible. You would have listened to my preacher. You would have, you would have obeyed my commandments. He said, if you love me, then keep my commandments. I want the protection of God, and I have to be submitted to the ways of God. There is an umbrella or a, or a covering of God, His protection. And if I get out from under that covering, then I cannot be helped. Amen? Amen. I know it's different. Hear what I'm saying to you. The Bible teaches us, in fact, it is the Word of God. Somebody said, well, I don't believe the Word of God is the Word of God. I want to help you with that. I don't believe that all the scriptures are from God. I believe man wrote things that he wanted to write. He added things, took away things, and, and uh, stuff like that. And a man can do that. But remember this. The Bible says anybody adds to the Word of God or takes away from the Word of God is in danger of hellfire. I told a man in, in, in a service at the altar who was telling me he didn't believe in the Word of God. I believe God exists, but I don't believe that the Bible that you say is the Word of God is the Word of God. I, he said, men added and took from it. I said, so you believe that God created the sun, moon, stars? He said, absolutely. I said, you believe God created the planet that we're on that's in the middle of space in one of the uh, thousands and millions of galaxies? He said, absolutely. I believe it. I said, so you believe God can create all of that? But you don't believe God can make his word to last from generation to generation and be true and be right according to his will and his purpose and his way. You have to get beyond all the excuses and understand that God's big enough to translate his word from one language to another and keep it real. If God can hold us all to this planet, if God can keep us all here, if God can give us oxygen to breathe, if God can keep stars traveling in their courses and the sun and the moon and the tide of water in and out and all this, all the rivers flow into the sea and yet the sea never overflows its bounds, surely God knows how to keep his word real and God is able to save my soul. blows my mind. I deal with people that don't trust God but trust drugs. Don't trust God but they trust other humans. I don't trust God. God's way can't be right. And then I watch people struggle under the weight and the load of sin. And they won't give God any time of day. It's time to stop. Listen, you don't have to be as strong as you've been trying to be. And carry the weight of the world on your shoulders and fix all your family problems and fix where you come from and what happened to you growing up. God will fix all that for you. You're not designed to be that big and that strong and that powerful. You're just a human being. You need a Savior. You're designed to need help. I don't need help. You need help. I need help. I have to pray. I have to fast. I have to go to church. I have to read my Bible because without God, I cannot do anything. I need a healer. I need a God that knows how to intervene. I need a God that knows how to help me. Oh, I hope I'm getting through to somebody today. Church is not hard. It's not difficult to live for God. It's not all that high education, high affluent stuff. This is just human beings that admit I need help. I don't know how to fix everything. I've got days where I'm overwhelmed. his God. 
And that's why God had to robe himself in flesh and come himself is because he couldn't find anybody good enough to do the job. So you got to stop with all that. Well, I wasn't born to the right parents, and I didn't have the right education. I don't have enough money. Jesus had one robe, one pair of sandals, and he had no mother, no father, no beginning of days, no end of days. Here, what I'm telling you, he's almighty God. He was denied by his own people. He knows what it is to be poor and broken and bruised and die ultimately. But he did it. all them good folk. He wants anybody that desires him. Yes. Right. I don't have enough money. Well, good thing you don't have to buy your salvation. You don't need money. The Lord said, come of me and buy without gold and without silver. Purchase from me with your faith. And guess what? God gave you what you need to purchase it for God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith and God gave you faith. If you're an alcoholic, you got faith. If you're a drug addict, you got faith. If you're you got faith. If you've been a bad mother, you got faith. If you're a good father, you got faith. If you have been a neglectful father, you've got faith. Every man has faith. Everybody. You don't get to have faith and then say, that's because I'm some la-dee-da and nobody else gets to have faith. You are not so super special human that you get faith and nobody. Everybody has faith. The homeless man in a cardboard box has the same measure of faith that was given unto the person that lives in the penthouse. Everybody has got faith, but stop putting your faith in people. Put your faith in God. Stop putting your faith in government and put your faith in God. He's able. He's able. If we were to be honest, if we were to walk through our minds and our spirits, you know what I'm saying is truth. What I'm preaching to you is truth. What I'm imparting to you is truth. There are people, because religion has done it, they feel like, well, I'm not good enough to interact with God or receive anything from God. I've I'm, I'm not lived a good life. I've not, listen to me, we, we, we've all lived bad lives. We all, and you said, well, I, 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 I've not done worse than some other people. Here's the thing about sin. All sin is the same in God's eyes. And God doesn't give you a misdemeanor or a felony or this. That. All sin is the same in God's eyes. Matter of fact, he said in the New Testament, if you break one of my commandments, you've broken them all. That's pretty strict. He said, you've broken them all. You need to repair it. He wasn't saying you're no good and you're going to hell. He was saying you need to repair it. You break one, repair it, and repair them all. Because it's, it's like a house of cards. It's all falling apart. And we've got to fix it. God is able to help every human being. There's no such thing as too far gone. In John the fourth chapter, where it says God is a spirit, John 4, 24, he was speaking with a woman at a well. And the woman he was speaking to, he told her in the conversation, go call your husband, that he could come to the Bible study also. And the woman said, sir, I have no husband. And the Lord said, you properly said you have no husband, for you've had five husbands, and the man you're living with now, the sixth man, is not even your husband. So you know just through that reading, she's got some problems in her life. She's been married and divorced five times. There's some trouble, whether it was her fault, their fault, it doesn't make a difference. The fact is, you've been in and out of five marriages, there's something going wrong there. But God said, I can fix it. You have never read your Bible where you've read of a problem, a need in somebody's life, and God said, oh, I can't handle that. That's too hard for me. That's too difficult for me. Listen to me. When God on that cross in the flesh, when he yielded up the ghost, you know where he went when he yielded up the spirit? The Bible says the spirit of God went to hell for three days and three nights and preached to souls that were held captive. There is no place that sin can take you that God is afraid to go find you. God will help you at your point of need. You don't get in the church and God helps you. God helps you where you are and brings you
you in the church. You don't get your ducks in a row and now God likes you. God likes you when you got no ducks and when your ducks are rebellion. And then God will put you together. You don't get saved and now God pays attention. God knows you where you are. You ever wonder when you do wrong? And used to, maybe you've drowned it out. But that bad feeling you get afterwards. What did I do? I shouldn't have done that. It was wrong, whether it's a fleeting moment or something that lasts for a while. That's God talking to you. That's not God trying to embarrass you and you're no good and I'm here to let you know. And God is not some one that hangs over your head with a mallet and every time you do wrong and he's looking for you to do wrong, he's going to whack you. doesn't work like that. That's not the God I'm talking about. I'm talking about the true God that anybody that confesses their sin, he forgives their sin. I don't have power to help you. God never says that. He has power to help all humanity. That's the beautiful thing about church is that people can come from every walk of life and drag every unclean spirit into this place and God will deal with all of it and help all of us. There are people that look saved that have the worst problems in this place right now. We can appear whole and be broken. Somebody shout hallelujah. You can be in a crowd and be the most lonely person in the world. I got it all together. Nobody has it all together. Even the flesh of God, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? That spirit started leaving that body, and that body started crying out, where are you going? I need you. Anybody, you got to get a hunger for this. I need God. It's not about want God. I need God because I've been doing it on my own, and I've made shipwreck, but I need his help. He's got strength. He's got power. He has wisdom. You are not in a place and down a road in some rabbit hole that God's never been down before. You're not involved in something that God's never done. God has saved people from your exact situation before. He has knowledge and experience in delivering from your type of problem. Come on. Doctors are good. But one doctor doesn't know everything. That's why you can go to your doctor and your doctor can say... I've identified or I believe I have, but I need to send you to a specialist. A specialist is somebody that deals with only that specific thing, and that's all they work on, and they're a specialist in that field. You've got to understand, when you come to God, it's one-stop shopping. He's a specialist in every field you need him to be in. That's why he's called the I am that I am. I'm not trying to wow you today. I'm trying to speak simple truth into your life. A spirit of truth. You don't come to God and he sends you somewhere else. There's no junior God. There's no gods with an S. He is God himself. And when you come to him, he's got your back. He can handle that and that at the same time. He can fix this and that at the same time. His hands are the hands of healing. greater counselor than the God that I'm talking about. I'm not able. I need to go find some help. I'm not against doctors. I've told you that. But doctors can only do what doctors, I mean, they just can go so far and that's it. You can go pay $80 an hour or more and lay on them. They're going to ask you, well, how do you feel about this? And what do you think about this? And as you open up, well, tell me about your daddy or your granddaddy or your mama. They'll recompartmentalize your trouble. Shift it around your brain and push it back in other places and you can shift blame to this person or that person. Whatever makes you feel good and comfortable at the time until our next session a week from now for another 30 minutes. I'm not against it. I'm just saying that's the way that it works. Or they can give you some solution in a needle. They can balance you out a little bit and get you to the next session. I'm not talking about that when I'm talking about God. I'm talking about a God that made the brain that is in your head. A God that made the heart that's in your body. A God that made he will 
will not recompartmentalize. He does not renovate. He said if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a made over. No, he is, listen, he don't fix you up, put a new facade on you, slap some new paint on you. He absolutely makes you a new creation. He yeah. will make you all over again. Yeah. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, but that which is born of the spirit is spirit. He will make you a new creature. Yeah. It is the ultimate do-over. Well, if I could go back and I could fix, if I could go back and I, listen to me about that go back stuff, friend. I can't barely go five minutes into my future. I wish I could go back and fix something else. Change a thought. Change an action. Change something. That's the world we live in. And God knows it. If God didn't know it, then why did God provide the things he provided? He said, my children, sin not. Sin not. But if you do sin, you have an advocate or an arrangement with the Father. Now, it's not a license to sin. He said, don't sin. But if you fall into sin, you accidentally slip up. You get trapped in something. He said, you've got an arrangement with me that if you confess your sin, I am faithful and just to forgive you. Oh, i got to keep pressing. I'm trying to reach a few of you. Hear what I'm telling you. That whatever it is, and you told yourself, well, I'm, I'm never coming back from this. I'll never be better than this. Friend, 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 listen. God can restore anybody from anything in a moment's time. There was a woman in the Bible who had 12 years of internal bleeding. An issue in her body for 12 years. The Bible says she went to every doctor and spent all of her money and was no better than she was when she first went. And now she's out of money. Things have gotten worse, tight. I won't pay the rent, the mortgage. And the Bible says that she told herself, I'm going to church. And if I touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. And the Bible says she made her way through the crowd. She touched the hem of his garment. She was made whole. For Jesus said, I perceive that virtue, virtue means power. When she touched the hem of my garment, power left me. What is that? I don't need God. Yeah, you do. Because that's where you get the power. Acts 1 and 8, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. The Spirit of God imparts power into your life. Power to heal you. That when doctors find, now they and you say, well, what if somebody finds something or I've got something and God doesn't heal me? Listen, God is God whether he heals or does not heal. I know that confuses people, and I, I, I ain't got all the time in the world to go into everything, but let me just simply tell you this. If God don't fix your physical body, listen to me, you're getting a spiritual body when we go to heaven. You That's don't right. get the same body you got now. That's and the right. Bible says in the new heaven, there's no death, there's no sorrow, there's no pain, there's no deformity. You do realize that, right? We're on our way to heaven, and yeah. there's no psych wards, and there's no hospitals, and there's no juvenile detention, and there's no prisons, and there's no graveyards in heaven. Right. Am I preaching to anybody yeah. that knows what I'm talking about? Yeah. You're not going to be like you are here. There'll be no need for surgery with that new body. Tough crowd here today. <laughs> Hear what I'm preaching to you. I'm trying to be nice about it, but you've got to get a hold of this thing and realize that the devil has absolutely bamboozled some people and your flesh has bamboozled you and believe, well, you did this, God will never accept you. Don't let the devil tell you what God will and will not do. The devil is a liar and the father of it. a long time 
She had a deformity in her body. That her head was where her feet were. She was bent over. The Bible says she could in no wise straighten herself up. Now listen, I'm, I'm turning 45 in three days. Two, uh, no, two days. Two days, let me get that right. Turning 45. It's getting harder and harder for me to bend over and touch my toes with my hands. Her body was so bent over, her head was down where her feet were. Try to walk like that. Try to live like that. And she was living like that, Pastor, because the Bible says she was on the street. And the Lord said, daughter, come here. So she wasn't at home locked up. She was living, so she was scuffling down the street. No doubt. People staring and making fun. Kids pointing. 18 years. And when she came to Jesus, and he called her, he said, daughter, come here. Some people say, well, why did he call her? Why didn't he go to her? Why? you got to forget all that stuff. If you, you have to get involved in your miracle. That's why you can't sit at home in your recliner and sip iced tea and say, Lord, work it all out. You have got to get up, get dressed, come to church, apply some works with your faith, for faith without works is dead. Dead. You can't sit on the pew and say, fix it, Jesus. You've got to get up and come down and pray when it's time to do that because you are mixing faith and works together. So he said, daughter, come here. And she shuffled her way over. And the Bible says he prayed for her and straightened her up in one moment's time. You think about it, her spine had to be straightened out. Yes. Hallelujah. She suffered for 18 years. One conversation with the Lord. Short conversation. Daughter, come here. Pray. Straightened up. He didn't ask for a social security number. He didn't ask her for a bunch of money. He didn't ask, forget all that fake junk that's floating around in the world today. He simply said, you want to be made, you can yeah. be made. He told one man, he said, will thou be made whole? You know how long that man was in his problem? 38 years. 38 years. And he'd not gotten better. And God said, will thou be made? That's the real question today. It's not will God heal me. Do I want to be made whole? We get used to living in our darkness. We get used. place where you are comfortable with your devils. Yeah. You learn how to stay on your side of the room, they stay on their side of the room. Uh -huh. I don't mess with you, don't mess with me. You don't out me, I won't out you. And you get comfortable. You can get comfortable in your depression and your oppression. You can get you can get used to a way of life to where you don't feel you need to come out and get any better. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. That's why you don't think you need saved until you get saved. Then you're like, dear God, I didn't know I was that bad. That's the way that it gets. You get used to living like you're living. Live in darkness so long that the sunlight hurts your eyes and you can't look at it. You'd rather go back in the den and the darkness you've been in. But great light has sprung up today. You need to come out of where you are. Be delivered. Stop being comfortable. Somebody shout hallelujah. Get comfortable with it. It's always going to be this way. He's always going to beat me. She's always going to cheat on me. At least it's better than having nothing. Always going to have a hardship. Always going to be. Not always. When you get Jesus in your life. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Clap your hands up to the Lord. And give him praise in this house. Let me share this with you. Elijah went on top of Mount Carmel and got victory over 850 false prophets of Baal. You remember the story? You remember what happened afterwards? 
When Queen Jezebel said, I'm not impressed and I'll kill you by this time tomorrow, yeah. even as you killed my prophets. Yeah. Anybody remember what he did after he read that email? The Bible said he ran to the valley of Jezreel and he found a cave and he went in the back of the cave and he went to sleep. Yes. And the Lord met him there and the Lord woke him up and the Lord said, what you doing here? And he said, all your prophets have given in to Baal. I'm the only one left preaching truth. And Jezebel said, she's going to kill me, so I'm doing you a favor by protecting or hiding myself so I don't die. Because if I die, you got no more preachers. Anybody remember what the Lord said? Yes. The Lord said, I've got 7,000 prophets yes. that have never bowed a knee to Baal nor kissed the idol of Baal. Yes. He said, I'm the only one. You see how we can get to thinking about I'm the only one. God said, i got 7,000. You don't even know their name. You're not the only one in your situation. You're not the only, you're not the first person to go into that sin. God has delivered many a saint out of that sin, and God can do it for you too. The Lord told him the second time he woke him up, he said, Get out of this cave. You go anoint this one to be king, and you go pray for this one, and you do my business because you work for me. Here's what I want to tell you you need to stop being that cave dweller, stop being that cave man. That I'm comfortable to stay in the back of my cave. I never get to do what I used to do. But I can live back here. And she'll never find me and never kill me. No, no. He that the son is set free is free indeed. I'm not talking about God hiding you so you never get found. I'm talking about God delivering. I'm not talking about, I, well, I can't never do this or that. Or if I see somebody drinking, I'm going to become an alcoholic. I'm talking about deliverance. I'm talking about deliverance where you don't go live in some glass bubble, but God sets you free. Yes. Not trim your branches, sets you yes. free. Yes. Uproot the desire yes. and the passion yes. for that thing. Deliver you. Yes. Deliver you. Yes. Deliver you from painkillers. Yes. Deliver you from pornography. Yes. Deliver so you have no desire for it. He that the Son has set free is free indeed. Would you stand with me today? This altar is open. Well, I've got shame. Bring it with you. And God's going to deliver you. I've got guilt. Bring it with you. And God's going to deliver you. There are no perfect people in this place. Preacher, you don't know what happened to me, but you don't know what happened to all of us. We've all got similar stories, things that have happened to us since we were born, things that we live with in our minds. Every once in a while, what we've buried resurfaces and we relive it all over again. I'm here to tell you that God loves you and God's going to deliver you from it. I know it hadn't been a pretty sermon, but I wasn't trying to preach a pretty sermon. I, there's so much hurt in this place. You know, blind Bartimaeus didn't get his sight because he stayed quiet. And he accepted it, went and sat in the corner and said, I'll always be this way. He got restored in his sight because he made some noise about his situation. Stop being quiet about your pain and talk to the Lord about it. Come on, with hands lifted, I surrender to you, Lord. I surrender. I don't want to live like this anymore. I'm giving it to you, Jesus, all my hurt. Hallelujah. All my pain. Jesus. Come on, the Lord's minister. It's all right to cry. It's normal to cry in the presence of the Lord. Somebody's going to pray with you. And I want you to release yourself to the spirit of truth. That's the only spirit that's in this house is the spirit of truth. God's going to help you. God's going to help you. God's going to help you. Just 
Here am I, Jesus. Here am I, Jesus. Here am I, Jesus. I present my family, God. I present my family, God. Your body not being healed is not a sign that God doesn't love you nor care about you. God loves you and he loves me in spite of everything. In spite of everything. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody thank him for what he's done in your life. Whether you've had revelation or whether you've been healed. Just like the sister testified about her healing. She said, I don't claim that stuff. I rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus. And Lord, you have given me dominion. You have to speak truth into your life. I don't claim this confusion. I don't claim this chaos. I don't claim this stuff. I, deli I deliver myself in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Would you clap your hands unto the Lord in this place? Come on, lift your voice with that hand clap. Give him a shout of praise. Thank you. Thank you. My deliverer, my healer. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen. Pastor's coming. Hallelujah. The greatest gift, the greatest gift that a person could ever receive is the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's the greatest miracle. It's better than coming out of a wheelchair. It's better than healing cancer. Is to be saved. 
be filled with the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Anyone here today without the Holy Spirit, you've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, would you raise your hand? Anybody? We've got a wonderful brother right here. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? This is Pentecost Sunday. Anniversary, recognition. The first day of the church, Acts 2, the outpouring of the Spirit of God upon humanity. God is able. I wonder if a few people would gather around that have the Holy Ghost, gather around our friend here. We're going to pray with him in the name of Jesus. God's been touching him all service. And from what I understand, since he's been coming to church here, God's been dealing with him. Amen. And we're going to pray. If you're in the crowd, you've got faith, you have the Spirit, I want you to stretch your hand towards him. We're going to pray in the name of Jesus. There's no reason for him to leave without the Holy Ghost today. To receive what God has for him. Amen. Would you lift your hands unto the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. That's it. Just lift those hands, brother. Just lift those hands. Lord, I surrender all to you. Oh, the Holy Ghost is all over him. Yes. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Receive ye the Holy Ghost.
the Bible says. If you've never been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, today is a great day. Our brother just received the Holy Ghost. He will be instructed about baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus. Listen, it doesn't do any good to take dirty hands and to lather soap and scrub and clean if you never rinse it away. You don't want to just repent and walk away. You want to get baptized and that washes away. Somebody said, well, what if I do that and then I commit new sin? Once you've been baptized, that sin is all gone. You sin again in the future and you will. Everyone does. But you don't want it to be because on purpose that you fall into this end. You repent and that blood flows again in your life that initially flowed in baptism. You don't have to get rebaptized every time you sin. And baptism, you get baptized by full immersion. You bury that old person. You come up a new person in Christ Jesus. If you want to be baptized, get with one of the ushers, pastor, Talk to them. They can enroll you in a Bible study. Make sure you have biblical knowledge beyond what I've just told you. Yeah. Amen. But if you receive the Holy Ghost, as this gentleman did here today, then I command you to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, yeah. even as Peter did in Acts, amen, chapter 10, and Paul in Acts 19. Be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, washing away thy sin. God bless you. Happy Pentecost Sunday. Yeah. Pastor's coming. Clap your hands unto the Lord. It's awesome, Terrence, isn't it? Yeah. Man. Praise the Lord. We're going to do that. You're ready right now? Amen. Amen. Scott, if you'll take him back there. We've got robes, towels, and everything you need this morning. James, brother, make sure Brother Bob's got everything on back there. We'll be right there. James. Make sure we're hooked up on the video. In just a few moments, we're going to see the, the video will come from the baptistry right up here. We'll be able to watch it right here. And, uh, and so until then, I'm going to invite our praise team to come back up. God bless those. Who are, and they're going to sing some of those songs we sang earlier in the service. Amen. In the name of the Lord. If you have to leave, God bless you. Go with God. May the Lord... Be with you. Let me just remind you, Daughters of Zion prayer tomorrow night with our ladies. Men's prayer in the morning at 6. Tomorrow night, ladies, Daughters of Zion at 6 p.m. Uh, and uh, before we leave here this morning, you'll get the rest of the announcements from Brother, Brother Cody Torres here in just a few minutes. But uh, how many excited about what we've heard in the Word this morning? Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. What an awesome service. Thank you so much, Brother Fell, for preaching the Word of God to us today. It's been awesome, has it not? Amen. How many got touched this morning in a mighty way? Anybody get healed in the house today? Amen. I think there were some healings going on. We're going to testify to that next Sunday. Let me know this week. And anybody else get the Holy Ghost for the first time this morning? Thank God for Brother Terrence, what God's doing in his life. Praise God. Why don't we just worship the Lord with our praise team? We'll baptize him here in just a few moments. Please stay and let's celebrate that with, with Terrence Watts here right now. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Brother Algeron.